Do you want to quote Rachel or you found one? Yes. All right. Well, thanks once again for uh, uh, joining me on yet another of these uh, virtual wine tastings. This is number 17, and we're going to be focusing on Merlot this time. So uh, a little bit about like the viticulture of Merlot is that it's an offspring of Cabernet Franc. Um, yeah, you know, as much as it's it's you know uh, grown throughout the world, you would think that it'd be kind of an older grape. And no, it was um, first recorded in the early 1800s in Bordeaux, France. Um, it's it was very smooth and flavorfully different from its Cab Franc parent, um, which has a little bit more of that like uh, pepper and and uh, green pepper note to it. And um, the name it was named after the local blackbird called a Merlot uh, that's, that like to eat the ripe grapes. Um, now, Bordeaux, uh, especially the, like the, the Medoc region, uh, which is on the left side, uh, is known for, for its heavy cab, uh, Cabernet Sauvignon uh, majority in its blends. But th this wasn't always the case. Uh, it, it was kind of regularly planted on the left bank until about the 1960s. Um, but then a, a severe frost and then subsequent rot set in that made them rip up all the vines, or at least many of them. Um, while the much more resilient uh, Cabernet Sauvignon uh, survived on that colder left bank. So Merlot um, has a much thinner skin than, than Cab Sauv. Um, it also has a, a higher sugar content and also lower malic acid. That, and malic acid being that thing that's uh, the, the sour or the bite that, that many uh, wines have. Um, advantage to, to Merlot is that they bud and develop very quickly. Um, as you don't want to have everything harvest at the same time. Um, so, you know, it, it, it kind of is good for, for one of your reds to be, um, you know, a little bit earlier on than the late September that um, like a Cab Sauv is. Um, but Merlot is really finicky about its ripeness. Um, it can go from, from ripe to overripe within days. And so it's really up to, you know, those, those uh, vineyard uh, managers to be on the ball with Merlot. Um, now, because it has that higher sugar, uh, you, you, you can't find a Merlot that's below like 13.5 um, and 13.5 uh, ABV. But in the hotter climates, expect it to be more in like the 14 to 15 range. Now, despite all the, you know, the kind of poo-pooing about, you know, all of its disadvantages and that, you know, it, all it, it, it doesn't really take to, um, you know, a lot of climates very well. Um, it's the second most grown varietal in the world. And it's used, especially in a lot of blends because of its velvety full fruit notes. Um, that it can impart to an otherwise like acidic and unapproachable wine. Now the, the flavor profiles for Merlot, um, in, in, on the fruit side, you're looking for um, either red or dark fruits. So like cherry, uh, especially plum, uh, plum being like one of the, the main characteristics of, of Merlot. So um, hopefully we should be expecting to taste that in no matter where it's grown, it's just a part of that uh, that varietal. Um, there there might be some vegetal if it's if it's harvested really early or uh, grown in especially cold climates. Uh, it might actually have a, a bit of that kind of you know green bell pepper um, note to it. Um, on the spice end, uh, you, it's typical uh, is you're looking for like chocolate and vanilla, which you know, most of that's imparted by the oak. Um, but in cooler climates, it can tend to give off a bit of an anise or even some baking spice. Uh, and, and along with that on the colder climates, you might also get like a little bit of like a flinty stone um, uh, partiality to it. Now the, the primary is that it's grown. Um, you know, what, the one that, that kind of really makes it famous is in France still. Uh, that right bank of the Bordeaux goes really heavy into its, you know, Merlot for its blends. Um, but much of the regions that are on that right side uh, go into like value-driven and blends. So um, 
you know, but there are famous wineries out there like uh, Petrus that make solely Merlot based wines that are highly prized and can age for, for decades. If you look, Petrus, uh, Petrus Merlot is, is still one of the, you know, uh, I want to say the most expensive, but if you look at their bottles, uh, they're pretty pricey. <laughs> Uh, over in Italy, it's planted in Tuscany as an addition to what are kind of known as super Tuscans. Well, th those are blends of mostly Sangiovese, but then they add in either uh, Cabernet Sauvignon or Merlot or you know, some combination of those. And it's currently listed as like the fifth most planted grape in Italy. So um, it's pretty big over there. Um, in, in the US, over in California, um, it's still the second most planted vine, even after it fell out of style in the mid 2000s. You know, thank you, Sideways. And uh, range from, from the hotter central California, making it kind of big and luscious, to colder areas like Sonoma that make a, a really you know, kind of a cool climate version. Now, uh, one of the other places that, that we'll be drinking from is, is in, from Washington State. Now, unlike California, uh, they never really gave up on the grape. Uh, it, it's a bit cooler area in the Columbia Valley, uh, especially like Yakima. And it is said to kind of give the best of both old and new world for its attributes. So you're looking for, you know, it's actually going to have more of like a vibrant, or it should have more of a vibrant cherry and blackberry notes, along with actually some, some decent acidity and tannins. And lastly, uh, one of the, the big places, because uh, everywhere kind of, sort of grows it, but you know, the places that are growing you know, quite a bit of it, um, um, the last one would be, would be South America. Uh, and that's, that's in both uh, Chile and, uh, and Argentina. Now, real Merlot uh, was grow, you know, is, is now starting to be grown in Chile. Um, but for the longest time, the, the cuttings that were, were thought to be Merlot. So if you, if you ever have a, a, ever see a bottle of, of Chilean Merlot from um, like, you know, the 1990s, um, they thought it was Merlot, but it was actually Carmenier. Because apparently they, they switched out some cuttings and somehow, you know, because of that colder climate, they thought that the, you know, the green notes that were coming out of this were, uh, you know, just, okay, that's just a, a, a cold grown Merlot. No, uh, it, it was Carmenere. Um, and it, it, I was actually tempted to, to add it to this tasting list today uh, to, to really kind of compare the difference and see how it could have been mistaken. Um, personally, I think there's a big difference in the taste um, if you've never had it before, uh, because when it's grown in colder areas, Carmenere um, kind of has one of the highest pyrazine concentrations for a red grape. Um, giving it a huge green bell pepper note to the wine. Uh, on that note, uh, does I'll open it back up and uh, see if anyone has any questions. No? All right. Well, on that note, let's uh, go ahead and move on to the wine. So. First one on our list is going to be the Chateau Monte. Go ahead and get some here. What's our first one? French one, I think. Yep. Yep. I'm still stuck on the right drink, which is normal. Is, which is over yeah, I, I keep going by the name, and I, I I should just be you know for because so there's so many substitutes happen is French first and okay so hard to find a good bottle of wine in Kansas City is it yes it is for me but I don't I don't have to oh wow there's a place that's um so as we're um, as we're looking at the uh, wine just the color on this I mean you know this is this is kind of Typical Merlot yeah. in terms of, yeah, that it, it is kind of like a, a darker. Um, so it, it, it's, it's really kind of bordering that edge between like garnet and purple. 
but no no that's 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 much more in the, the garnet range let's see and then we'll give it a bit of a swirl yes i'm trying to pace myself you want to jump in the swing yes and look now one of the things I, I don't know, I'm not sure you know which one everybody else has, but as I'm swirling this around and I'm and I'm looking at the the coating going down, you know, not, not only the tears, but the fact that it's it, it's staining um, the sides of that glass, which you know really kind of tell that that this has um, a lot more uh, you know kind of pigment to it, so that more than likely this is coming from a, a bit of a hotter area of of france than you know colder jennifer is like bomb like being arrested by water. and those legs are kind of kind of big but again you know i'm i'm, I'm going to guess this is probably considering it's french is, is this probably going to be more on 13 five side <laughs> no this, this one's actually uh Wow, uh, one of the one of the the bigger of of our Merlots tonight. So it's fourteen point five. I have a friend, not a friend. All right, so let's give this thing a bit of a swirl, and then uh, let's kind of go over what we're smelling. All right. Any uh, what, what's everyone getting on the nose on this one? It has like a really strong alcohol smell. Okay. Ours has a lot of plum, and and Kurt is it says it's earthy. <laughs> mm, <there> is. <laughs> that was a good translation. <laughs> So earthy, yeah. Huh? I can go with berries, like blackberry. So I mean, I'm, I'm not raspberry. It's, I think it's uh, a dark fruit. Uh, this, this is definitely dark fruit. It's like a blackberry. Yeah. Okay. A little bit blackberry. Uh, def definitely plum. I feel like the it, it's still like kind of oak. Plum. But it's 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 fresh, you know. This isn't you know like it, as much as as this was grown hot. It doesn't it doesn't taste hot, or, or or should I say it doesn't smell hot. <laughs> and hot meaning like if, if all of a sudden this started to have like a much more like vibrant, um, you know, like fruit flavor where it was almost like it was uh, like baked or stewed. Comparatively to to this, this would be like, you know, what I would expect a. a plum or a blackberry like you know right on the on the shelf um you know at the, at the market to be able to smell like it says located on a beautiful site with premium soils made of gravels and clay our 21 okay. acres vineyard produces a soft and delicate wine <laughs> ours is going to be soft and delicate and yeah well i mean i mean most most merlot is is considered as soft and delicate but uh Oh, well, well, let's give it a try. So cheers, everybody. <laughs> so would you say soft and delicate compared to like that? I like this so much better than that. Of all hmm. No. You don't like it? Not really. Oh, that, that is definitely a much more baked um, black fruit than I was smelling. <laughs> Kind of like that, that kind of just cloyness to it, but I don't know if I would call this uh, smooth. It, I mean, it's it's definitely kind of velvety. Hmm. Yeah, I like the word velvety. That's a good. What's anyone else uh, getting anything different off this? Because I mean, I'm, I'm definitely getting the, you know, baked plum and, and maybe a bit of cocoa. You get a, you get an oak. Um, not much. The lingonberry is not. You could do like, like, mm. like that, right? 
Not the most important. Wednesday is not really for me. I need you to get a COVID test, though, is till minute clinic that you got to step in the house. All right. Well, I guess it's time for uh, time to try to find some some pairings with it. So, uh, yell if you uh, have any winners. <laughs> We have a blueberry chocolate that's lovely with it. Yeah. Yeah, uh, Merlot is, is definitely a, a chocolate wine. So I think, I think ours should be really close to this. Like yeah. we're at like half hour back. It might be a little <laughs> but Really close in Boston. It's not as good with the salad, but the salad is really good. So just eat the salad. But it's also a, a a red meat, you know, and gravy kind of wine as well. Pretty much a lot of smooth stuff. Um, this is this is the wine for it. Like, yeah, or should I say, hearty? Well, my uh, my typical Trader Joe's. Uh, you know, stout steak pie, um, oh God, almost, almost kind of brought out a, a bit of like more of like the red note from it. <laughs> hmm. I like if you do the red stuff with the meatball. Do you like the red stuff? Do you like the wine or just like with the wine? What's in the red? Lincolnberry. Now, uh, Corey, what'd you uh, what'd you go with for uh, your final food pairing? I went with the the grilled beets and then carne asada, mm -hmm. yeah. and uh, it it pairs really well with the carne asada. The beets is a little interesting uh, pairing. Oh like, yeah, the earthy overtones of the. That's what the one. Find the red for macaroni. Oh, that's nice too. Yeah. And one of the other things that, uh, because I, you know, we'll be traveling on on St. Patty's Day, I, I went and got some uh, some Irish soda bread, and apparently it's got black currants in it. So, oh, I'm I'm hoping this is also going to go well, though. I, I'm a little hesitant about the sugar, and no spice, um, just making this bitter. But let's try. <laughs> oh, the Irish soda bread. Yeah, it's kind of. Land. I can say that because I have Irish in my background. <laughs> it's kind of like stolen in Germany. Yeah, no, that's that's not a good pairing. <laughs> but I think that has more to do with the the sugar. Then like you know, if I just picked out one of those little black currants and and ate it with with this. This is good with it. Yeah, really good. It's just flavor. You got the chocolate. I'm gonna need to save that. I think that's really good. I. The more that I I'm drinking on this, I'm I'm starting to get almost like a like a perfumey. Like a like a flower from from this. Is that on YouTube? I think I Oh, That's interesting. No, I don't. She doesn't like it. Really? Yeah, no, I don't like the apothec, but I like this one. Really? Go away. No, cooler. So, so which one don't you versus do like? I like the French one. Rachel does not. She likes. Oh. Well, no. I, I, she I prefers like yeah. the apothic over this. Apothic, huh? <laughs> that out loud, guys. So we started the yeah. lecture before we you did. Uh, I mean, I you know, apothic's not. It's not else. bad. I didn't want a little something else of that. Sure, sure. Ready to move on? Let's go. I like this one. I like this one. <laughs> It's good with a, it's a, what would that uh, Mark, 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 
macaron. 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 Oh, how's everyone else's glasses? Are we are we ready for a um, next cup? Next cup, move next down. Coconut uh, and condensed uh, milk. Things, so. Love those things too. Are you to do that really <laughs> Was that Nash? No, it's like California. All right. Let's uh let's move on to our cross fork. Cross fork creek. That's that what region is that? Washington. That's, that's Washington State. Okay, so we have this one. Oh, the velvet the velvet devil? Yeah. This one's really good. So fast. Come on, a, little, wait, wait. a little Charles Smith. We're going to spend a few minutes. Okay. Not Charles Shaw. Now, Charles. Like, like they said, you know, we're, we're, what we're hoping to to get from this when we, when we taste it is uh, that it's going to be, you know, it's going to have some remnants of, of that French Merlot that we just had. But you know, it's going to be kind of our our crossover into the new world. So, it's far colder climate, and it's going to be. As I'm looking at this one, um, it, it it is definitely darker than than our French one. Um, I'm not sure about the the Velvet Devil. I'm I'm going to guess because it's Charles Smith that it's also really dark. <laughs> it's nicer before we started, right? <laughs> No, I'm trying to. Uh, it, it's still in that same kind of garnet range. It's just a little bit, you know, more more opaque. As we spin this around, my reading glasses. <laughs> yeah, its coloration is actually a little bit less, and it's pulling down really quickly. So comparatively to the the fourteen five one, I would probably put this one. No, uh, I, I would guess this one's more like 13.5 to 14. And yeah, 14. <laughs> Can I see the bottle, please? Can you read the back in a watch? Uh, it doesn't really have any words. It's like. <laughs> No words. Charles yes. Smith Wine. Got some Metallica pretty pictures. In Quincy, Washington. What? <laughs> All right. So let's give this thing a bit of a swirl and then we'll give it a sniff. Oh, wow. Now that's that's totally different from the last one we just had. Do you smell anything? Mm -hmm. I feel like it's actually surprisingly similar. I would expect it to be more fruity, but this is a little. It's not as much calm. Right. Just some more. Like like me, I well, and maybe maybe it's just the, the oak, but I'm I'm definitely getting, you know, I'm I'm getting the dark fruits, but I'm I'm getting like some vanilla and mm -hmm. like some, some kind of some kind of herbs to it. You know, it's almost yeah. like dill. Clove or there you go. Yeah. yeah, like clove, clove. Oh, you're smelling clove? Okay. We don't have the same wine. We're yeah, we don't have the same Columbia Valley. And the, some of these were hard because it's washed. Is anyone smelling like butters? Like, I want to say butterscotch, but it's not that sweet. Yeah. Yeah, I, I think that's more of that. You're getting a bit of that spice note to it. More scotch than butter. <laughs> that is like that and anise. Yeah, that, that actually that, that almost that almost makes it smells it smells like 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 whiskey peat. <laughs> mm -hmm. I think anise, yeah. I think so more than clove is the anise. Hmm. I was like, what's that? What's that? Spice, it's shaped like a star. Star it. Oh yeah, star. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, let's give this thing a taste. Cheers. Glad you figured out how that <laughs> Oh wow. Yeah. Mm. This one's sweeter. I could drink this with stuff. Um, <laughs> stuff. 
See, now I, I, I don't think I don't think there's really you know much sugar to any of these. It, it's really about the acid, and and this this is again from from old world to new world. Um, you know they're going to start getting a, a little bit more even smoother. <laughs> and I don't to, to me this is this is already getting you know into that. I mean, if, if we thought the last one was was velvety, this is this is you know just massaging my tongue. Which one? The goat cheese. The goat cheese. The the sugar. Hmm. Yeah. yeah, sugar. I'm liking that. But what are people getting on on the uh, on the palate for this? It's more raspberry-ish. Or there's like a flavor in there that's kind of reminds me of like melon. Melon. Hmm. Like kind of I mean, like that neutral taste to it. Yeah. Yeah. It, it's kind of undefined, kind of milky. You need a gem for I don't know. To, to me, I, I'm definitely getting, you know, red and black fruit. Uh not not any any you know blue fruit to this. Top of the shelf next to the refrigerator. But I'm I'm getting pepper and tobacco. I think that's the thing that, that that tobacco is what I'm tasting, but I don't know the word for it. Like I wouldn't call it tobacco. Or it's no. what I'm in on here. Yeah. Yeah. That's stuff. Are you not a not yeah. a big cigar guy? Rachel left it here, so I mean fair game. <laughs> Finders keepers. Yeah, because I mean that that's that's what I'm I'm tasting here is is like some some fresh tobacco. Yeah, I guess it's. Like, I don't think it's tobacco because I don't smoke, mm. so that's like not the first thing that comes to mind when I. Smoke. So, <laughs> now, now I have to now I have to go like look up if if Virginia still has like tobacco fields. They do. Oh, I'm sure they do. Because they do. now I I want to go see if I can just get a tobacco leaf so that I you know like a fresh one so that I can compare it to this because I mean you know. The closest I had is you know, you know, like some really good premium cigars, but yeah. My ex husband's um, aunt and uncle grow tobacco, but it's in southwest Virginia and I'm not driving there. Yeah. Hmm. Maryland produces a lot of tobacco. I, I the last oh, one, yeah. last one I could, I could, I could, I could give or take, you know, this one, this yeah. one I, I like, <laughs> yeah, it's I actually. Like it. I like it better than the last one. I mean, I, I usually stay away from Merlot's, but this is this one's making me change my mind. <laughs> How pretentious! All right. Uh, as, as always, uh, you know, yell out if you uh, find any good pairings with this. Yeah, I think you want you want to have a. Uh, or I don't know. My voice doesn't pick up. Yeah, we're on. Like, yeah. Rachel can say it. Yes. Kurt is Kurt likes the we have an arugula salad and he put some balsamic vinegar on it. Okay. And he enjoyed that. Aged balsamic from Modena. <laughs> Aged balsamic from Modena. Ah, like real balsamic. <laughs> yeah. Coated home type A over here. Minus. <laughs> 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 just like the more plus having vinegar, the older I get, the more I'm like, I just, I just should eat this shit every day. I don't know why. So it, it, in, it had some, uh, some truffle cheese, and and it really brought out that earthiness from that. I like it with the the goat cheese, the herb goat cheese we have. It's good pairing. The beets go really well with it too. Beets. Oh yeah. Oh, wow. that's interesting. So 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 earth is definitely like earthy stuff is definitely. Uh, it's nice with the Ikea Swedish meatballs and lingonberry. <laughs> so which part is coming out though when, when you have it with that? Is, is the lingonberries really kind of bringing out more of the red it fruit? Is. Yeah, it's very fruity. The, the regular steak makes it taste like table wine more well. <laughs> so not a good pairing. Well. What the fuck you do? <laughs> <laughs> La di da. <laughs> I'm not talking about the steak. I'm talking about the wine. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I, 
I'll, I'll, I'll just, I'm just going to keep singing praises of, of that Trader Joe's stout steak pie. Um, the thing's amazing. It, it, it is like the kind of like the Swiss Army knife of, of red wines. My son would be like, what is that? Like sit for 10 minutes. What's the Swiss Army knife? It's the the Trader Joe's steak and steak stout pie. I guess the winner. No cheese. Yeah, it's so good. Oh yeah, I know. It's so good. Because I mean, you know, the filling inside is almost like you know, like a beef pot pie, but yeah, much more savory. <laughs> but a couple of the, steps up. And then it's got that buttery, flaky crust to it. That, yeah, it really kind of brings out everything of of Merlot. Yeah. Story down the Betty Crockett cookbook, or was it Jim better hunting Southern Living? Who knows? No, 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 it was one of those in the binder. It was either Betty Crocker or uh, Betty, Betty Hunt. Better hunting oh, Chocolate, chocolate, chocolate crinkles. Wow. And it's the not the gingham one. Yeah, the, yeah. the chocolate Merlot thing is a thing that yeah. we could explore. Wow. So if you're out like just. So it's the English teacher. <laughs> so do you do like you do Julia Child's too? Or... How's, how's everyone's glasses look? Whatever. You use a lot of butter then. This doesn't have any well, butter. Just raise it. I did. Uh, so when I first made the eggs Benedict or whatever, I did YouTube videos that from Martha Brown, Martha Stewart, and Julia Child's. We have this recipe. <laughs> That's the one. It's smarter than anybody who ever cooked her recipes, so that was hard. And then Martha Stewart was complete raw. Like she was all right. We are you moving on. We are moving on to our Benedict? eccentric. Are you, are you having eggs Benedict with wine? Yeah, yeah, prosecco. Yeah, eggs yeah. Benedict with a mimosa. <laughs> yeah, you definitely want something bubbly with with. Especially eggs Benedict, where it's you know got the the, the hollandaise on it. Yeah. Uh, you want something you want something to really kind of scrape away all that all that cream. I tried like five like different white wines, and it's just a bad idea. Don't do it. A little bit. Yeah. <laughs> well, because you had five different white wines, or because it's just a bad pairing on five different weeks. Okay. <laughs> and, and the last time we did an Airbnb, they had a bunch of that. All right. So. I know. Eccentric. They do, and I've stayed with the cabinets completely. The eccentric. Let's just go ahead with salt and pepper. You want the third one now? Yeah, yeah. We are moving on to the eccentric. Which is the chili. chili. The Argentinian or Chilean. Okay. Um, I mean, just pouring it out of the bottle. Yes, this one looked dark. And yeah, it's more purple out of the bottle. So is is yours from Chile or from Argentina? Chile. Okay. Yeah, I mean, to me, this this one definitely has much more of a you know, it's almost in that that purple range instead of you know. And out of garnet. It's an interesting flavor. Yeah. The cheese on its own is really wow. good. This is a different nose. Yeah, well, it's dark. It's very there. dark. Yeah, like, it's one. like almost opaque. I'm getting more like spices, vanilla, and oak. This one. So these are coming down fairly, fairly quickly. I mean, yeah, so I, again, I, I try to err on the, the lower end. Yeah, so, I mean, if anything, this one's probably going to be more to our 13, 13 five. Yes, I think so, Richard, I have a question. Uh, yeah. The reason why this is so dark is because it has less alcohol in it? No, it's it, it just, you know, like where it's grown. And, you know, I would almost think that whatever cutting that they have of Merlot, no, um, like something on it, it's just it's it's almost like a like a like a thicker skin or or you know darker skin. That's okay. and it also it, it's also you know the way that they make the wine instead of just pressing it. Oh, that's so um weird. what what they could do is after they press it, then they take all those skins and and essentially put them in with 
you know, the wine that got pressed. And so it, it then just keeps, you know, uh, you know, getting even more and more of, of that, um, uh, of that pigment, uh, you know, put into the wine. So, all right, let's give it a swirl on the sniff. That is really spicy. Mmm. Like and this one, this one's altogether different too. So different. So all wines that come from Argentina are mostly That's the thing. Like I bet it, they're just calling them Merlot. <laughs> really, like, like it's like they cross, like you know the. <laughs> The bees like move the things and so it's like all the wine is small, but they put small bits. Oh. What are people yeah, smelling on this one? It's not that it's good because it's got mushrooms. That was in the Merlot's, and I looked at the country and was like, oh, okay, I get this. I went to four different liquor stores, and, uh, so like, and then to me, I'm, I'm getting like solely black pepper or, or not black pepper, but uh, just black fruit. Stuff, but, um, I just like it's very baking spicy to me, like. Nutmeg, clove, and vanilla, vanilla, and okay, but not mace no, and allspice. So you're definitely getting that baking spice, like like the full gamut. Yeah, <laughs> and it's like oh. vanilla wines. It's Love like, them. It's like the molasses crinkles without the molasses. It's like all the ginger and everything. Oh yeah, yeah. I do. You pull plenty of fruit out of it. Oh. All right. Well. Go ahead and give this thing a taste. Cheers. Oh, I like this one way better than the other two. Yeah, so there's mm -hmm. more. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and and as said, I mean, you know, as we keep getting more into you know the, the, the new world climates, uh, oh, these, these are these are definitely getting much smoother. You know, that 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 less malic acid, um, you know, so that they're not as, as tart, but yeah. That might have made a difference. So, so what are we getting on the on the palate now? Is it confirming that that baking so, spice? Yes, it's very it's good. Baking spice, but it doesn't. This is weird. It doesn't taste like wine. I don't even know on chocolate, <laughs> and this pairs amazingly well with the chocolate. Since I'm way ahead of you guys. Mm. Pop chocolate and the blueberry chocolate are my favorites. Lingonberry, so, also. And, and you guys had the Chilean one. I mean, for, yes. for me, um, you know, I'm still getting mostly black fruit with maybe a little bit of tobacco, and but I'm I'm, I'm also getting that same you know spice rack of of baking spices. Like maybe what is a lindenberry? Is there? What's a lingonberry? Lingonberry, yeah. It's like some, I don't know, Swedish berry that gets put on. Swedish meatballs. Meatball. <laughs> it's similar to a cranberry, but a lot sweeter. Kind so of it's like a, sort of a red poison red berry. Yeah. Gooseberry. So actually, it's a good, a good Ikea, and you can buy it by jars of it and jam and stuff. So it's like a cranberry relish to go with Swedish meatballs. Yeah. And that that's, I mean, that, that was kind of one of the weirdest things whenever I, I went to Ikea and had that. And then they give me this, this bit of jam. I'm like, what's this for? I, I, I just like Swedish meatballs, you know, nice and savory. And then all oh, of a sudden no. you have that and it, and it. It's so much better. Yeah. And that, that. Bit Anyone of like, seen that, that outdoor cooking show on create on PBS where it's in Scandinavia somewhere and they do they're outside and they cook these Scandinavian dishes. They put on it to start with. To pomegranate vinaigrette. So does it all have to do with like fermented fish? I really go with that. <laughs> yeah, there was a lot of that. It's just on PBS. It's pretty interesting. Oh, like, do you, you ever want to see something hilarious but also disgusting? Um, you know, watch reaction videos to a uh, Sir Stroming. Unnecessarily. <laughs> it's actually. Uh, it's like banned from from ever carrying a can of sir strumming on airplanes we could go to horton vineyard because it's a they, they put it's i think it's like a like a herring that they can up and it ferments in the can so that you you can't find a can that that isn't like completely bloated i am out <sighs> Just my husband's been to sweden and they they do serve like fish in these little 
food trucks that's like herring and stuff that you wouldn't normally you know yeah. eat over here yeah so strumming and, and lutefisk lutefisk is another you know i guess if you're in like like wisconsin or minnesota um you know you can get that during the christmas time but and i've, I've had it once and it, it 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 was pretty much like like somewhere between whale snot and like fish jelly <laughs> and it, it was not good and especially for someone like me that hates fish <laughs> Oh, so we find so the, any good pairings for this? So the, the carne asada that I have is like a little more on the saltier side and the salt just explodes with the wine. It's so... So Sarah made a an arugula salad that has dried cranberries, blue cheese, and a pomegranate vinaigrette. Mm -hmm. And that vinaigrette with this is really good. Wow. It's a Marzetti. Blue cheese is so beautiful. <laughs> it's gorgonzola. <laughs> okay. Mm -hmm. I, I, we just think that the acid of yeah, the vinaigrette the salad is really good. It's the winner. I right think now. the salty licorice from Sweden is also a pretty good pairing. You still haven't finished that bag? <laughs> No, no, no. No, 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 no. New bag. No, we New haven't finished bag. the other bag. No. <laughs> so we bought more. <laughs> this is salty licorice that I've decided I don't need to try. <laughs> I don't know. I, I, there's this pirate licorice in, in, uh, in uh, Denmark <laughs> that is, it's like putting a drop of the ocean on your tongue. It is so disgusting. <laughs> You need to do caviar and champagne. Speaking oh, you know what else they had? It I hear they had a tomb <laughs> of caviar. A creamed row. Creamed row. Gross. That sounds disgusting. This is really good with your chocolate cookies too. Wow. We, we go did to buy trout it. fishing, and sometimes when you catch a trout, it's all about the lake. It's it's uh, yeah. As much as I was kind of hesitant to to do merlots, I'm 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 actually kind of kind of happy. This is this has been. Uh, this one's a pretty good experience so far. This is my favorite. Oh, uh, well, ours is different. It's a chili. I know, but still. It's like weird. I might. It's just eating yeah. shit out of some place. Yeah, I like this one a lot. It's really I wouldn't recommend my it, favorite like is the salad. Too. Yeah. I like it with the cheddar. It's pretty good there. Did you eat it with the salad? My salad's gone, so yes. I sucked it down. Would you like some more? You tried it with the salad. Okay. I did, but I will force myself to eat some more. Will enjoy the experience. I just need to watch it. <laughs> hmm. Okay, so for, for me, this one, um, I just tried it with the uh, with the truffle cheese, and it kind of washes it out. So this one's definitely not on, or at least to me, it, it's it's much less of that earth friendly like the last one was. I will. It does kind of cut through the the earth flavors of the beets. I would... Yeah. Okay. Like I just finished licorice and I took a bite of steak. That combination was a okay. <laughs> no. No, really? Yeah. Oh my god. It's so, so weird. I know. Shitty job for like the next two years. Two years. And then you get to go. Um. Yeah. Until Rob. <laughs> until Rob graduates. Still in licorice. Still. All right. Graduates next year. How's everyone's glasses looking? <laughs> Any great. You about ready? <laughs> Huh? I know that's so weird, but uh, Rachel's looks just about empty. Uh, Ray, you empty? All right. Well, everyone else, finish your glasses because uh, we're moving on to number four. <laughs> So, please. It's a rolling, this is rolling this is for me, uh, we have our Wente Stan Sandstone from California. I'm not exactly sure where the Livermore Valley is. Oh yeah, the Burgle or Bogle. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Livermore is right outside the Bay Area. Yeah. Uh, she used to live right next to it. Ah. Vallejo or something. Yeah. 
And yes. now we know. I'm just doing this like Sundays. I'm just and knowing it's half the battle. G.I. Joe. I've never done that. Is it never. Do that like never. All right. <laughs> I had I had cheese and crackers for lunch. All cool. right. Oh. <laughs> All right. Okay. It takes it to it like bumps it up. So, so looking at this one, it, if if I had if I had known, you know, I, I, I when I when I set these up, you know, I'm I'm kind of guessing on you know which one's going to be uh, you know much much stronger on the palate, and at least just looking at the the coloration on this. This one's actually lighter than our last one. This one's much more in the garnet, if not. Yours is really light. Like ruby. <laughs> and and for, for those of you, it's it's red, then ruby, then garnet, red, ruby, and then purple. It's, wait, purple's below red though, right? Well, in terms of like as like ever increasing in in its darkness. <laughs> I'm trying to learn that music. Oh, yeah. The first page. Hmm. All right. Yeah. So it's 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 staining pretty heavy though. I want this to And I think this is our our lightweight of the night. This one's thirteen five in terms of its uh. BBV. All right. So. All right. So totally. Totally. For sure could. totally. Okay. Ready, guys? Okay. Hey, can you can I read this in a belly girl? Like, can I read this, please? Totes uh, or goats? Sure. Go for it. Like a belly girl, right? <laughs> <laughs> totally. So, like, since 1883, Five generations of our family have handcrafted fine wines that express the very best of our estate vineyards. <laughs> With warm days, cool nights, well-drained sandstone soils, and incoming breezes from the San Francisco Bay, our family's hillside vineyards are ideal for growing outstanding Merlot. Big belly. Keep going. This is a delicious wine with lush flavors of blackberry and plum with a hint of oak and a long fruit filled finish. Beautiful, beautiful. You do that way too well. <laughs> yeah. Can I tell my joke? Can I tell my joke? Yes. Can I tell my joke? Uh, Rachel has a joke now. Okay, so. Um, why does a valley girl make her boyfriend wear two condoms? <laughs> for sure, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> edit that out. <laughs> so, so, edit that out. Yeah, Richard, edit most of me out of your video. <laughs> okay, so no, the nose on this is lovely and I, Wait, have I, I gotten the win yet? Out. Yeah. Let, 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 and, and then, yeah. Let's go ahead and uh, I'm, I'm going to wash my brain out with uh, smelling this wine. <laughs> that's a good idea. Like there's a handful of this wine, on there, and that's why I make white because like okay, like there's you know there's like four or five different smells really coming out. Of the top. Well, the the east kind of has that. Remember um, the nanny like from around the time of Valley Girls in the '80s, the nanny. Oh, yeah. Fran Drescher. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, don't do that. Don't do that. <laughs> Just don't. That's a hard. Note. That that's staying in. <laughs> <laughs> don't embarrass Richard. That's <laughs> I know Richard already <laughs> muted me once, so I'm trying not to talk. To him. Hey, that that was only once. <laughs> and you learn your lesson. Don't don't pregame with half a bottle of port before getting on a Zoom call. <laughs> I'm in Florida, so I'm <laughs> feeling like the heat and the palm trees. And... Oh, some, someone brought the Speaking candy. Speaking of port. <laughs> Look familiar? I'm supposed to run six miles tomorrow morning, guys. Come on. Have fun with that. Yeah. So, yeah, I, I, as, as thanks for, uh, for hosting me over in Kansas uh, last December, I, I sent Rachel um, some of my port. Now, you guys be careful with that stuff because it's dangerous. 
Um, that, yeah, has, I didn't drink it though. I just drank. Um, well, you, yeah, you, I mean, you, you, you like the, the Whiskers Blake. Uh, I did, but I didn't have it tonight. Um, that, that stuff is like 20% ABV and yeah. it, it goes down like you can't. <laughs> So it, it snuck up on me. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, just a warning. Be careful. It, it, it I, I, I'm, I still get crap from my brother for wrecking my sister-in-law in Vegas from, she drank like three quarters of a bottle of the stuff and then was sick for the rest of the night. <laughs> I'm so glad Richard, I was not the only one that was taken down by that whiskers Blake. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, the, 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 the stuff for my sister-in-law that was that was my port like the stuff that i make <laughs> ah. which, which is the, those two bottles that that heather uh, rachel was showing those are two bottles that i sent her from you know my stash of you know homemade port one flavored with uh, uh toasted caramel and one flavored with creme brulee <laughs> oh that sounds awesome I'm sorry, this smells like great belly. They are both very good. <laughs> no. Is All that right. like the sex juice or something? Yep. Uh, yes. Caramel sex juice and the uh, uh, Bacnalia brulee. Oh, I brought the sex juice too. <laughs> oh, yeah, because you also brought the, the vanilla fig. The vanilla fig, the bac uh, Bacnalia. Bacnalia. Relay. And the sex juice. All right. Well, I'll let's hurry through these so you guys okay. can get to, to dessert. But uh, so what are, we, what are we smelling on this one? Grape jelly. I'm getting vanilla and chocolate, oak. Nope. Smells like grape jelly. I think it's a bouquet of amazing flavors. I think Kurt's in love. Yeah, literally. Yeah, well, I mean, I'm, I'm getting kind of like a berry blend where it, it, it there, there isn't really like a descript, like a distinct, like red, black, or blue. It's, it's kind of just all of them. I'm getting that tobacco smell that you mentioned for one of the other ones and a vanilla off the one I'm drinking. Oh, the bogle? Yeah. Okay. So good to, good to know with the bogle that they, they do throw up, a, a, I would say, a lot more oak. At their their merlots than uh, pretty good with the chocolate cookie. At least from what I'm smelling on this one, like this one, I get a little bit of chocolate, but I'm not getting that like heavy like um, vanilla, coconut and dill that I, I would expect from something with a with a lot of American oak to it. All right, well, last taste of the night. Cheers, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> I'm on the parents. Exactly. We're weird. <laughs> High achiever. Yeah, and then the, the goat cheese is very That's it. That's it. That's it. So we get to deal with anxiety. It's just a restaurant. What 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 are people getting on the palate on this one? No, seriously. I'm in love. Like, well, like, well, my heart strikes dude. Okay. Kurt is in love <laughs> with this wine. <laughs> Like he's over here. He's, he's writing he's poems. poems. Writing poems. <laughs> yeah. Like I'm gonna start spitting out haiku. <laughs> you, you, need, you need to drink a little bit more and graduate from poems to sonnets. <laughs> <laughs> I think it pairs really well with the chavra, the herbed goat cheese. Yeah, it's very good with that goat cheese. Oh, what else? Oh, for for I mean. Again, is anyone getting anything different than what they smelled? Because I'm, I mean, for me, I'm getting much the same. I'm getting that same berry blend and chocolate. Yeah. Mine is very smoky tasting. I'm also getting hints of anise and like maybe bark. Huh. Okay. Well, again, you know, or I, I think it's, you're, you're definitely confirming that that Bogle really oh, likes the, the not, person. Like, <laughs> which, which is, is it's not a bad thing, you know, and, you know, 10, 15 years ago, I mean, that was the style, um, <laughs> yeah, where, where everybody, you know, just like heavily yoked and it was just a big vanilla bomb, you know, that was, was tasty for everybody, but, you know, 
a lot a lot of like your and and the thing is that is, is that a lot of your bigger um production are going to you know resist some of that change because well the people that are buying their wine you know like their wine the way it is and and they're not going to you know really change that much but uh you know a lot of the smaller places will you know they're going to cater to uh, uh the, the sommelier is uh, a, a little bit quicker and so you know when the trend is you know, less oak more fruit um you know the, 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 they tend to, to move that way, which, which this Wente is, is much more, um, you know, berry forward and then um, just like a hint of what you would consider like oak. It's interesting because the Wente is available a lot in this area, except for the Merlot. The Merlot was almost like impossible to find, but oh. I could find others of theirs where at, like every store, even Target had it, but not the Merlot. Yeah, well, and, and I think and I thought I, I had said that the, at the yeah. liquor barn, it, like, it at least listed it. Yeah, they were out of it at mine. Oh. They said they had it at the other location, but that's like an hour away. Okay. It's a, it's a real but they had the other ones too. But like Target, even my, my local grocery store oh. had had that brand, just oh. not the Merlot. Huh. And they don't even carry the Merlot according to them. Oh my gosh. So that's I thought that was interesting. Yeah. Have a cookie. Uh, Corey, how's this thing uh, matching up against either the beets or the carne? Carne really well, beets not so much. I think it's just the earthiness is kind of overpowering uh, like the fruity nuts of the. Yeah, yeah. I love the grilled beets idea. Those sound good. I steal everything from Richard. I, I, none of this is mine. <laughs> But it wasn't, it wasn't a chain, but um, I think it is actually. This one wasn't, okay. I can guarantee you. But um, so while we're, we're kind of going through things, I'll go ahead and, uh, you know, kind of close out uh, at least this session. So our, our next session will be in three weeks um, because, <laughs> well, next weekend I'll be in Virginia trying out the no, bunch of the wine. Me too. <laughs> what a coincidence. <laughs> next weekend. Yep. Okay, so the next one will be in three weeks. So yeah. what are the details of the Virginia thing? Just because I'm just a little curious. I have a couple so of friends we're, we're, in Virginia also. We're in Charlottesville. I have a friend there that lives there, but she's not Mensa, but she's really smart. She's like government IT and she's really smart. Ah, so yeah, and, and most of us will be there Thursday through Sunday. And, you know, but our main days are going to be Friday and Saturday where we're, you know, hitting at least five wineries a day. And uh, yeah, so, I mean, it, it should be, you know, but at the same time, uh, usually when I, I go and visit a bunch of wineries, um, I don't want to see wine for like a week. So, you know, doing another session in two weeks, um, not a good idea. But, <laughs> but you know, as, as, as to kind of make up for that, um, I think it's going to be it's it's the one in three weeks is going to be really fun. Uh, you know, it's 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 going to be so we're we're, we're finally doing Bordeaux. Oh my god, that's my favorite ever. <laughs> what are we doing? So we're finally doing Bordeaux. Oh, but right. but it's going to be it's going to be a, a I want to say like a scavenger hunt. You want to actually order it? Where what I'm going to do is so I'll 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 put up the. The, the sections because it's going to be you're going to you're going to have to find one from from the left bank like in the dock region you're going to, have to find one from the right which is like saint emilion or pomerol uh one from uh, a white bordeaux from entre du mer and then either a, a, a white or a, a sauternes from Graves. 